Greetings programs, and welcome to a quick side trip on the primetime journey. Uh, short version, I managed to uh, strain my left hand pretty bad, and the final two figures have really, really tight ratchet joints, and right now those two things just do not get along, so I figured we would uh, take a break from Transformers as a whole, in fact, and take a look at... The NECA Shin Godzilla figure. Um, second version of it, as far as I can tell. Um, there's a version that, like, doesn't have all the, you know, crazy glowing going on down it. Um, clearly, I got the version with the crazy glowing. And as you can see, um, this figure is a... It is the thing of nightmares. And I absolutely adore it. Um, yeah, this is actually how I managed to hurt my hand. Uh, two reasons for that. First reason is trying to get his tail on. Because um, in the package, it's like, you know, it, he comes packaged with uh, the first two sections of tail attached. And then the rest of it just as an accessory in the back. And it says, oh yeah, just, just soak him in... Uh, Warm wa soak the tail in warm water for you know 20 seconds and it'll pop you know you can pop it right on um I ended up having to soak the tail in genuine boiling water for about a minute and a half before it would actually go on the whole time mind you uh the first version of this figure had all these uh you know his dorsal fins were you know kind of a rubbery soft you know, plastic. Um, the the these ones are are not. So these were actually like cutting into my hand while I'm just manhandling him down here, trying to shove this on. But um, as you can see, uh, they've got a really really cool kind of a glowing effect going just all the way down the back. Uh, Completely uh, glowing all over the end of the tail. And then uh, he's got his uh, famous split jaw from how he actually does his atomic breath in this movie. Which, uh, I remember watching the movie for the first time and seeing him do that. And it was... My jaw almost did the same thing. I'm just going to put it that way. It was incredible. And, um, so, first thing, uh, before I get to, uh, just how stinking poseable this guy is, I'm sure you've noticed there's a, uh, gaping hole in his mouth. And that is because he actually came with, uh, two, I guess, effects parts, you'd call them. Uh, so he actually has some, uh, blasts he can fire off. Um, they're just, uh, these are a slightly soft plastic... I'm not going to do a whole lot of bending on them just because I want them to stay straight. And they actually are uh, molded around a wire. And this wire is the second reason I hurt my hand, actually. Because this one in particular had just way, way too much wire sticking out. And whatever this wire is, is incredibly strong. And I was there for like, I think, 10 minutes with my side cutters just trying to clip part of this off. So, between those two things, uh, I am an idiot and, uh, yeah, messed up my hand. And so, these just, uh, slot in one up here. Let's turn it so you, uh, there are, unfortunately, uh, a couple little holes on one side of it. So just, uh, if you put them on display with these in, just go ahead and turn those away. And then, uh, there's actually a hole here on the end of the tail. Because, uh, I guess minor spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the movie. Uh, this Godzilla actually can shoot his atomic breath out of the end of his tail, out of his mouth, and then just like as a massive light show array out of his back. Which, um, 
the movie is awesome. You need to see it. Uh, it is still my second favorite Godzilla movie ever made. The uh, first favorite being the new uh, King of the Monsters movie, but this one is still a very close second. You have to understand a little bit of Japanese culture and that they're more, you know, they have a lot more investment on, you know, the group as a whole rather than just, you know, the individual. So the main character is Japan. You know, you're not going to have a person so much. It's Japan is the character. And once you understand that, the movie's really good. But anyway, let's uh, get these out of the way here. Um, now, the one downside I will say for this guy is this is a very big, very heavy figure. And because of that, a, a lot of the joints... They don't care what you do with them. They're just going to sit where they sit. I'm sure I could go through, because uh, these are all just ball joints. I could just you know, start uh, putting floor polish on them, thickening them up and everything. But I don't think I'm really going to bother. But as you can see, he's got a uh, whole lot of sections going through the tail here. Um, no, they're all a little bit limited, but you know, together they make for a pretty good range of motion overall. And uh, another difference between this guy and the uh, normal, the uh, the first version that came out, um, the first version actually this tail was also the soft rubber and had like a wire in it so you could reposition it a bit. Um, this one, you don't get to move it. And the camera also does not like to focus on this part, apparently. But yeah, you do, you do not get any uh, flexibility in this one. And, um, yeah, basically, as far as I can tell, like, every joint on this guy is, like, some form of ball joints. Maybe the thigh here isn't, but it would be, like, the only one. Um, he's got a little... Uh, the knee mostly just twists, I guess, actually. Um... It's hard to tell uh, so far what bends and what doesn't because he is incredibly stiff. But, you know, he's got, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, tilty ankles and everything. Um, funny enough, in the movie, that's basically all his arms ever did. This Godzilla does not bother using his arms, but uh, they did put in uh, little hinges and swivels and everything all the way through the arms here, so... He act, you know, you've got a decent range of motion on these little things. They're just <laughs> incredibly useless, and he didn't bother moving them in the movie, so I'm not going to bother moving them myself. Then, um, yeah, he does actually even have a uh, joint here, so you can, you know, move his uh, upper body around a little bit. Um, the head's got uh, probably the biggest range of motion. Again, everything's a little bit limited so that it doesn't, you know, break the effect too badly. But still, it, it looks so cool. And it's not like, you know, this is going to be something that you'd go do a lot of crazy poses with. If you see the movie, you'll know this Godzilla is just a lumbering, unstoppable beast. It just walks through a city and leaves nothing behind him. And uh, that's pretty well captured here, actually. Because you don't really get to determine what it poses like. You get to make sure his feet are flat. And, you know, if this was, a say, a SH Monster Arts figure, it goes for, you know, two, three hundred dollars $300, I would be pretty upset with that. But this one, just being a little uh, NECA figure, you know, I th think this thing normally runs around, like, maybe $30 max. I actually got this one uh, on sale at Target. I only paid, like, I think it was 10 or 15 bucks. It's It's worth picking up. You know, you can see they've, again, there's a lot of, you know, Really intricate paint work, getting the skins just look all, you know, cracked, scabby, and bloody like it did in the movie. Um, they've got just little highlights from his 
insane atomic breath just all over the figure. There's even some like down here underneath uh, the neck if the camera will focus. There it goes, kind of, at least. Finally learned how to force it to focus while I'm do talking about something, so yay! I'm only 90% incompetent now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, if you liked, you know, Shin Godzilla, you owe it to yourself to go pick this guy up. He's pretty affordable. No, he's not the most posable thing ever. He's got a lot of joints, they just don't do much. But I I don't really find that to be a bad thing because this thing you know you just put him on top of your bookshelf or something. He's not gonna fall over. He's incredibly stable once he, you get him posed and you get him how you want him, and he's going to look incredible. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this weird little uh, side tangent. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.